Today I've got some fun thrift flips. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! The first project is a wood tray. Now actually this is more like a resin or something like that. Not exactly wood but it's made to look like wood so that's what we're gonna call it. You can see the little writing on the bottom. I don't have a date on there though, but I thought the design was just beautiful and it's all elevated and dimensional. It's kind of dirty. It's got a, a ring on it from a, maybe somebody had put a cup there or something that leaked onto it. So I'm just going to take an alcohol wipe or baby wipe, whatever. You can also use just a damp cloth and just wipe all over this. I wasn't sure how it would be submerged in water since it's got that little spot that's kind of peeling up. And to be honest, I didn't really know how it would take paint with that little peely spot. But it worked out better than anticipated. So once it is clean and dry, I'm going to take some plaster chalk paint. And I'm just going to start putting this thick paint all over it. Now I'm using a chippy brush. It's got long bristles. And this makes putting the paint down into all those little recessed areas a whole lot easier. I'm just going back and forth, up and down, and just kind of scrubbing it into those spots. And when it starts to look kind of bare, I go ahead and dip the brush back in the paint again. This has little vines on the side. It's got these beautiful little floral wispies right there. And look at all that detail. Just from putting the white paint, you can really see it. You could leave your project just like this if you would like or you can do like I do and just distress it now since we use chalk paint you could wet distress with a baby wipe if you wanted to you could use a sanding block a piece of sand and paper you could use a emery board or like a little you know fingernail file to go around these edges whatever you have to do your distressing with you can go ahead and do that so here it is with just a piece of um, sand and paper just folded over and I'm just going over all those little vines, getting in the grooves. I kind of want to get on the high spots and leave the paint in the low areas. That's actually how objects wear when they have paint. It's the areas that are on top that are easiest to be touched that get all the scratching. That's the areas that we love the most, right? So any extra details that you want to bring out, be sure that you go over your items just the same way. There's so many vases and water pitchers and decorative candles, things like that, that have these details that maybe don't have the color that you like, but look at the difference. This is definitely more of what I like. So because this is where I want it to be, I'm taking a microfiber cloth and a little bit of some clear wax, and I'm going to start going over the entire project. I'm just kind of using my finger to get down in the lower areas too because I want to protect the surface. And I love the way that this looks. This is so pretty and I'm so glad. This is one of my most recent um, Goodwill items that I've picked up and I'm going to Goodwill today by the way. But this is one of my most recent pickups and I just knew I could tell that there was going to be a lot of potential in this little piece. And it is just gorgeous to me. But yeah, think when you go to Goodwill, you know, don't just look at something as it is. Look at the potential that it could have. Because you would be surprised at the difference you can make with just a little bit of paint. So if you don't want something that's real complicated, and I know I've done sanding and paint and cleaning and waxing, but it doesn't take long. And it's chalk paint. Plus, I have a little dryer that I use in between all my paint, so everything dries quickly. And then that wax just sets up on its own. You don't have to do anything else to it. Love it. Number two and number three are wood risers. So these are some thrifted candle stands, or whatever you want to call them, candle risers. And then these wood slices will be linked in the description box for you. These actually came from Arteza. I get a lot of my crafting products from them. I'm going to be using some clear wax, some antiquing wax, and I think, yeah, I'll be using some wood glue and hot glue, things like that. First, I am going to take my candle risers here, and I am just going to sand those down. 
I'm going to make sure that I get all of that area nice and smooth. I love these. I've had them for years and I've used them for different things in my decor. But now I think it's time to give it new life. So that's what I'm going to do. See the difference sanded and not? Now once they're both sanded, I'm just going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to wipe all of the dust off of there. And the bottoms look terrible, don't they? Okay, and then I'm going to use a sanding block also on the top of these wood slices. Be very careful. Do you see the flaking that's going around um, when I get to the edges where the bark is? That will flake off, so just try to be very gentle on those pieces. Wipe off your dust. And then so I'm going to start off by putting a clear wax on this one. You're going to see the difference and what it looks like when you put wax, different types of waxes on the raw wood. This clear wax brings out almost a yellow in these wood slices. My dog is not happy. I think she's barking at the, the geese out there. So if you hear that, forgive me. And then we're going to do the same technique on the on one of the little stands here. So it's clear wax on this stand and the clear wax on one of the wood slices. And you can see the difference here from waxed and not waxed. Now we're gonna move on to the darker wax. Now I'm gonna give you two options here because at first I thought, okay, well, we'll just make a stain and we'll put that on there. Not realizing how dry this wood is. Do you see how it is just absorbing it? I can't even really move it around on there. But, you know, I was committed. I had already started, so I just went ahead and finished it off. Hoping, crossing my fingers, dreaming, anticipating better results. And I'm also taking it around on the edge of the bark so that it too will be sealed and not flake all over the place. I'm going to use the same little stain that I made on the riser because this is going to be the base of that one. So I want it to match. But you can see here, it just soaked it up. Even in this one, it soaked it right in there. There's no luster at all compared to the other one. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to use the antiquing wax in its original form. So that's what I did. I took my microfiber cloth took some of that wax, put it down, and then just moved it all around my candle riser. And I like this so much, I thought, okay, well, when the wood round is dry, we're gonna repeat this process because I think that it's gonna give us a better result. I'm so happy that you're here with me today and that you've been coming by and watching, see the difference? And watching my videos and commenting, I love it. All right, do you see how that's soaked up? I do not like that finish. But you can leave it if you like it. But now, again, it's absorbent, so I'm using small sections, a little amount at a time, and just really working that in. I use small sections because I don't want any marks to show up in the stain. And it didn't. It turned out, it turned out fine. Those little dark areas you see were just the way the wood is. I didn't spill any or anything. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm going to go back with my clean microfiber cloth and wipe off all of the extra wax that did not soak in yet into that first round that we did, the light one. I'm just rubbing that in carefully, and I'm going to do the same on the riser. Wipe off the excess wax because we don't need all that extra on there. See the difference? So the side that doesn't have anything on it is going to be our underside. We're gonna use some wood glue, and I just like to take a brush and dot a little bit on because this is gonna give us a permanent hold. Well, we hope for a permanent hold. And I didn't put it directly onto the metal. I've got it kind of over on the wood. And then I'm gonna use some hot glue so that we have a quick hold. I'm gonna stand above it and get it as centered as possible. And then there you go. So I've got a little bit of my bark don't worry about that bark now. We're going to fix that. 
and this is how it's going to look. You don't want to put wax on the underside because the wax is going to interfere with it sticking down. And you don't want that to happen. So just don't worry about the underside. If you want to go back and stain it after you've got your riser put together, that's absolutely fine. I'm not worrying about it. Nobody's looking under my risers. Same thing with this darker one. We're going to put it down. Give it a minute to set up, and then when you flip it over, this is how it looks. I love this. This screams rustic to me. It absolutely does fit into my house perfectly. All right, so now I'm gonna take some white wax and go over my darker wax. Not necessary, you don't have to, but again, the wood is so porous. I really wanna make sure that it stays nice and clean and easy for me to dust and take care of and then you can wipe it back off. Now we're gonna have to fix our edges. So I'm gonna use some of this matte Mod Podge on a brush and go all the way around the bark. Try not to get it on the top, clean it up if you do. And definitely it's okay to get that, and I actually encourage you to get that down in all the cracks and over the little top, because you see it just, it flakes so badly. And I can just imagine myself dusting this, and every time I dust it, pieces of bark flying off everywhere. I wanna maintain the bark, I like it. I like the look of it. So, it's gotta be sealed. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Okay. Now, you can see on the underside, I'm taking that Mod Podge and going around as much as I can down there too. Um, hindsight, I got this on a little thicker than I probably should have, and it almost has like a little glaze to it. But that's okay because everything is staying in place nicely. And this is how they're gonna look once they are done and dry. Yes. The fourth and final project is going to be our wooden box. Look at this little treasure box. Isn't this cute? Now, I don't know if this is a jewelry box or what it is, and actually, it is totally fine the way it is. But you know I wanna give you options, right? You can see here about how much, um, about what it measures. And then the top of the box is a little bit larger than the bottom, or the inside. Here's my little tag. I have no idea what it says because I didn't have my glasses on. We're gonna use some of these wall stickers from Dollar Tree. You can use any stickers you like, or you don't have to use any. I'm gonna use some of this adhesive cork paper, and then a wax brush and a stiff brush, and then I'm gonna use the soft shoe brush to clean my item. I'm gonna clean it, dust it. This gets down in all those little grooves to remove any dust or anything that is settled in there. And then if you wanna use a wipe afterwards, you can to clean it off. I'm going to use white wax this time and my little stencil brush and I am just this is just a really stiff brush the bristles are very stiff I'm gonna kind of pounce it on there and then down in all of those lower areas too you don't have to you could even do like a, uh, a whitewash effect if you wanted to on here whichever way you want to do it but I'm using a little swirling and tapping to get down in all the recessed areas because what is down below is what will stay when you wipe this off. What is closest to the top or the upper layers is what you will wipe back. I hope that made sense, but you'll see what I mean. If that didn't make sense, you will see what I mean because I leave that in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. This has flowers and vines on it too, so I think it is gonna look beautiful with that little tray that we did in the first project. I'm going around the hinges. It's not gonna hurt anything at all. And I will be wiping that medallion in the middle back off, so no worries. If you get a little too much pooling up in there, just take another clean, dry, stiff brush and just get that out before the wax has a chance to really sit up. Now, while all of that is drying, we're gonna open. And then just with whatever is left on the brush, blend that onto the inside of the box. These waxes are good for the wood. It's gonna help preserve it, as well as make it look pretty. Now the inside is kind of damaged, so I'm gonna cover mine. These two areas are a different size. So we've got a smaller bottom area, and then a larger top area. I'm gonna cut down my cork foam board, whatever, adhesive stuff. 
to the right size. I'm going to peel off that white backing and it's going to stick right down in there. Isn't that easy? And then just tap it down and push it down into the corners. Try not to scratch it because it's a soft material and it will show um, lines and marks if you do that. You see here the difference in the sizes. There's like a quarter of an inch difference, I think. But you know you have to allow for that lip when you close it. So that's why it's a different size, I believe. And just press it down, same way as we did the other side. If you like this, you can leave it just like this. If you don't like the cork inside, you can always use construction paper. You can paint it. You can use um, any type of paper you want. You can stencil it. You can use decorative paper. You can use crafting paper. Whatever you have or like. But I thought, you know, just for something a little different, that I would try these butterflies. I think it's cute and it's a surprise because it is not expected when you open that box to see something like this in there. So this is just an idea for you. And by the way, these wall stickers, they stick well, but they peel off easily. So if you don't like it, like I have this big butterfly positioned in here, I actually have it positioned wrong. I'm going to remove that in a bit and you'll see that it's very easy to fix. So now, I'm going to start wiping back all of that top layer of wax and you can see here how it's coming off. You can see that dark wood through there. This is the same cloth that I used before. I just folded it over and found another little section. By the way, you can get these little cloths at Dollar Tree for $1.25 and I think there are four, three or four in a pack and they're really good for craft and cleanup. All right, so I'm just taking my finger wrapped around that cloth and just going around all of those areas and using the brush when I need to to remove, you know, whatever I can't get to. You can also use your fingernail to get down in those small areas. Just wrap your finger and point your finger down into those areas. And I was a little bit rough, you can see. I had a little piece come off there, but you can't see it. Follow me on my social media. Love to see you there. Besides, did y'all know that I have all kinds of crafting boards on my Pinterest? I do. I even have free printables. I have help with sublimation and Cricut, things like that. So be sure that you check my Pinterest out and you'll find the links in the description box for that. Okay, so I like this. You can do more if you'd like, however you like yours. But you see when I open the box, my butterfly's upside down. So I'm going to take it off. See there? And instead, I'm going to add two more of the small ones. Now that is quite a surprise, I think, from the outside of the box. Big difference. And it looks so much better than the little, I don't know if it was moldy or water damaged inside that was there. And I'm just going to use my little Cricut tool to press those down so they stay nice and flat. These are all of those projects together. And I think that they are very nice. I think that when you buy thrift items or when you're shopping for thrift items, often you overlook things because you don't see the potential. But I really want you to see the potential. Subscribe to my channel and I will do my best to inspire you, keep you curious, keep you learning. I believe in you and I know, I know that we all have creativity within us. It's just a matter of believing in yourself and tapping into that. You can do it. There's no wrong in crafting. Whatever brings you joy is exactly the right thing for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.